Welcome traders to another tick mill earnings season preview with me Patrick Munley. Before we jump into today's presentation as always want to adhere to the risk disclaimer and most pertinent to today's content is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine they're not indicative or representative of those held by tick mill UK or tick mill Europe limited. Let's jump into today's report we are looking at Apple Apple is set to announce earnings after the close of trade in New York today. We're looking for a consensus earnings per share of $1.26 on revenues of $90 billion. During the same period a year ago, Apple earned $1.24 a share on sales of $83.4 billion. Last quarter, Apple didn't provide official uh, guidance for its Q4 2022 earnings. Apple has had a strong showing against Android competitors in the past three years. Smartphone shipments have stalled lately though, uh, first amid COVID and lockdowns, and now from higher inflation, recession and layoffs as consumers choose between few, uh, food or fuel. Uh, nevertheless, over the past 11 quarters, Apple has increased its share in the global smartphone market. Unit shipments uh, tend to have a signal, cyclical peak in Q4 following uh, iPhone introductions in the September-October period of each year. More importantly, Apple's share of the smartphone market has increased at greater rates. On a yearly basis between uh, 2019 and 2021, Apple has significantly increased its unit share of smartphones versus the Android handsets. Apple achieved record June quarter services sector revenue of $19.6 billion, up 12% and including all-time revenue records for music, cloud services, Apple Care and payment services. Apple now has more than 860 million paid subscribers across the services on its platform, which is up more than 160 million during the prior 12 months alone. The main question going forward for Apple is the performance of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Generation 1 and Snapdragon 8 Plus Generation 2, uh, which will be formally announced at its annual Snapdragon Summit event in mid-November of this year. Chinese smartphone sales have been stymied in the past year due primarily to COVID lockdowns, uh, but also because of the underperformance of Apple's uh, made at uh, Samsung's factory uh, foundry in China. The move by Qualcomm to move to the Samsung foundry, which is the same foundry making the Apple A16 Bionic processor. This could be a strong headwind for Apple in that region. Let's take a look at some of the statistical trading patterns around Apple earnings releases. Apple shares have moved lower in the immediate aftermath of earnings, seven out of 12 previous reports. On average, stock moved up 0.6% uh, in the first day of trading after the company's reported its earnings. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, Apple is more likely to trade higher one day after earnings for an average gain of 0.3%. On average, the stock has moved higher by 2.4% one week after earnings. From a volatility perspective, options traders are pricing in 4.6% move on earnings and noteworthy that the stock has averaged about 3.5% move in recent quarters. Moving to a flow and sentiment perspective, there has been notable buying, uh, 58,645 contracts of the bullish 155 call expiring on Friday. In general though, options order flow ha it has been bearish. Um, Apple share price has drifted down a negative 8% post its prior earnings announcement. Using the last 12 quarters of dates, the average drift between earnings uh, is about 10.2%. Let's pull up the Apple chart here and see if we can identify any uh, near-term trading opportunities. So from a technical perspective, obviously we've been in that downdraft prior uh, to the uh, last earnings release. Put in a decent bottom at just below 135. Got some nice divergence here on the four-hour time frame. And so that's set up a technical bounce and we've achieved or came just shy of the target there, 152.73. So for me at the moment, whilst 145 holds a support, I would be looking for longs through uh, the 153 handle, initially targeting a move up into the 156.79 area. If we can get through there on a closing basis, then attention moves to the 160 handle and we do have a gap above there at 163. 
Now, any loss of the 145 handle is bearish development, immediately looking then for a test down to 140. If we take out the 140 on a closing basis, we look for a retest of price cycle lows at 134. I would highlight on the weekly time frame, we do have a technical objective on the downside versus the 176 swing high at 123, and that also coincides there with the weekly high volume node. There's some levels to keep in mind if, uh, if the earnings report does significantly uh, miss expectations here. And uh, if we do see more weakness in terms of general market sentiments as well, those are some downside targets to have in mind. But for now, constructive above 145, looking for 155 and then on to 160. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.